Thank you. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, everybody, for that warm welcome, and especially to Dee for your wonderful uh, warm welcome. When you were elected Young Liberal President, uh, you might have said some nice things about me just now, but I find it aspiring, absolutely inspiring, that the next generation of Liberals in all states are demonstrating that level of confidence and diversity in reflecting the true community that we represent. So thank you and congratulations to you. But ladies and gentlemen, it is my wonderful honour to address you today at the 62nd Federal Council of the Liberal Party, a party which has been a large part of my life, as has been for yours for decades. And can I start by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which we stand and pay my respects to elders past and present. Can I acknowledge our party federal president, our executive, uh, ministers, premiers, uh, opposition leaders, uh, party faithful one and all. Uh, the last two years has been the most difficult our nation has faced in a long time. Prolonged drought, natural disaster and of course pandemic. Uh, difficult situations which would crumble or allow any other go government to falter, but can I say first and foremost how inspired and proud I am of the leadership of the Morrison government? Because... Uh, it is fair to say that about a year ago, or just over a year ago, none of us knew what to expect, expect in Australia in relation to the pandemic. We knew there was uh, horrible situations in every part of the world. And yet, what would Australia's fate be? And from the very first moment, our Prime Minister had the courage to argue with us, and at that stage, we we're all fearful of the health consequences, but at that stage, the Prime Minister, before anybody else uttered those words, said this is as much about our economy and jobs and the future and livelihoods as it is about saving lives. And it is that mantra which has allowed New South Wales to weather this difficult past couple of years, in particular during the pandemic. If it was a Labor government, we would never have had JobKeeper. And I say the Labor Party is floundering uh, at federal level and in some states like mine because it is the Liberal Party that is a party of the worker. It is a Liberal Party that supports people who employ, who want to work hard and get ahead, and people who want a better life for themselves than perhaps their parents or grandparents may have had. Now, these are values which really appeal to me because what drew me to the Liberal Party was the notion of the equality of opportunity. That notwithstanding your postcode, your background, your circumstances, every individual should have the choices to be their best. And that means having meaningful work, especially during a pandemic. And can I acknowledge the efforts in particular of Treasurer Frydenberg, who's here, and commend him for his outstanding leadership in the economic leadership of our nation. <laughs> And the National Cabinet has been a wonderful new phenomena to the national context. What it has done, rightly so, is highlight that when we come together as a nation, we have to respect and expect that every state has its own unique needs, its own unique circumstances. And yes, it's perhaps been highlighted more than ever before, but that is a positive thing for our future. I like to call it dynamic federalism, where we build on what makes us different, but we also build on what makes us Australian. And New South Wales, during the pandemic, has tried to make sure that at all times, we're not only members of New South Wales, but Australians first and foremost. And that's why, proudly, uh, New South Wales continues to welcome 3,000 Australians home every single week uh, through our quarantine system. And <laughs> it, is, it is by no means a, a, an easy thing to do. Uh, it is by no means a perfect system, but no quarantine system in the world when you have a contagious disease like COVID uh, can be perfect, and I want to put that on the record. So when I hear other state leaders talk about perfection, they're trying to achieve something which is impossible. Uh, but uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm also pleased to say that in New South Wales, I think two things have really marked our ability to weather the COVID pandemic as we, as, as we have, and there's no guarantees about what's around the corner and no assurances about what our communities will face. But firstly, two, I think, core Liberal values. Firstly, just being uh, good managers and efficient government. Uh, we've had, unfortunately, one lockdown in New South Wales about a year ago but we used that time to build up our systems. We quadrupled our health capacity. We made sure our contact tracers were well resourced. We made sure we employed an extra thousand people to be frontline contacts with our citizens, including many from the airline industry who were unemployed at the time. And we made sure that uh, we had the systems in place to be able to weather whatever came our way so that we would never go into lockdown again. 
So not only did we uh, make sure our contact tracers, um, I believe, are the best in the world. I know every state premier, I know Steve would, would say the same thing about South Australia. Uh, I know our contact tracers are the best in the world. And we actually put the police in charge of all logistical arrangements, including the quarantine system. We really demonstrated a whole of government approach to make sure our health experts were able to be freed up to do what they do best. Some of you outside New South Wales may or may not have heard of Service New South Wales, which is our front-end customer-leading citizen-centric organisation. We have, we have an adult population of 6 million people in New South Wales. 5.1 million of them so far are on the Service New South Wales app. So if we need to get a message out to our community, we can do it very quickly. And of course, the QR system, which is QR code system, I would like to think started in New South Wales, um, a single system whereby people check in whenever they go to a venue, which gives our contact tracers that ability to do that. Now, these are a few micro issues we've done at a state level, but I hope it demonstrates that it's not by accident that you can weather these storms. You do need efficient systems in place, and we use the time well when we're opposing those burdens on our citizens. So I talked about good management being critical during a, during a crisis, but so is trust. And we trusted our public. We trusted our community when we gave them advice to do the right thing. That allowed us not to be heavy-handed, not to limit freedoms unless we absolutely had to. And in New South Wales, we didn't make up lists of who was an essential worker. Our attitude was, if you have a job and you're working, you're essential. <laughs> Go ahead and do it. <laughs> we gave information to our businesses as to what was COVID safe. We gave information to our citizens as to what was COVID safe. And guess what? Innovation works. <laughs> businesses and employers actually can lead and be innovative and make sure that they adjust their behaviour in order to keep people safe and yet keep their businesses going. And I'm very pleased to say that uh, New South Wales has been able to continue its uh, more than $100 billion infrastructure pipeline without stopping for one day during the pandemic. Even during the lockdown, our construction sites were still going and our pipeline uh, continued to be built. In fact, uh, in some instances, because of less traffic and congestion, we actually have a few projects ahead of schedule now in New South Wales than what was previously the case. But also trust, trust uh, in our employers, trust in the business community, trust in our community and trust in the individual to do the right thing. And I feel the community has repaid us by trusting us as a government, by taking our advice, uh, by appreciating that it's uh, based on, the, on expert advice. And so here we have during a pandemic a demonstration that core liber liberal values can make a difference and will continue to make a difference. And most importantly, most importantly, never losing sight that at the end of the day, we are, we are leading, uh, in my case, 8 million citizens who want to make sure that their safety and security is assured and want to make sure that we have a future which is as optimistic as possible during these difficult times. And I want to end my brief remarks um, with where I started. And that is, if it were not for the leadership of Prime Minister Morrison and his vision of making sure that we dealt with this crisis as much on an economic footing than a health footing, Australia would not be in the position it is today. And I can tell you that as a matter of fact. He uttered those words. <laughs> he uttered those words. He uttered those words at our first National Cabinet meeting. I apologise if I've breached any confidence. <laughs> Uh, at a time when all of us were fearful, at a time when New South Wales had more than 200 daily cases, when we didn't have a quarantine system, it was a scary thing to have to consider. But his strength and leadership really had an impact on me personally and the way in which that I decided we would take New South Wales. And I hope we've demonstrated in New South Wales there is an alternate way to heavy-handed lockdowns and heavy-handed approaches. However, we don't know what's around the corner. But what I do know is that you can provide any possible freedom to your citizens if you manage your systems, if you trust your community, and you appreciate that livelihoods and jobs are as critical to the well-being of our citizens as is their health and safety. Thank you so much for your time. I wish the conference and convention well, and I look forward uh, to participating in the re-election of the Morrison government. Thank you. Yeah.